All right, hello everyone. This is Daniel Orion, and welcome back to our guide to spider identification. This episode is all about cellar spiders. Continuing our trend of spiders that really like to hang out in spider webs, this is going to be the third of those in that group. So, this is the taxonomy group for that shows how cellar spiders are classified, right? So just like the other two spiders, they're both arachnids, they're both spiders in the order Araniae, and this time they are found in the family Fulcidae. So, cellar spiders. <clears throat> Let's talk about common traits about cellar spiders, because this guide is all about looking for those common traits about how they're different from other spiders, right? So, point number one, they make messy webs. They practically make cobwebs. It's very hard if you find a cobweb to distinguish one between one made by a type of cellar spider and one made by a type of cobweb spider, unless you see the spider directly in the web, right? Then there are some pretty easy ways to tell the difference. For example, cellar spiders have very long and skinny legs. Now, you might think this is true of most spiders, and I wouldn't disagree. However, cellar spiders seem to have the most exaggerated proportions of how long versus how skinny their legs are. They're really quite comical to see. Uh, lastly, they don't have the broadest range of coloration. They usually range from anywhere between yellow, tan, and brown. You're not going to find any pitch black cellar spiders usually, not that I know of. They won't be fancy green or blue colors usually. They're going to try and be more dull, more so to blend into their environment. <clears throat> I guess this is the final point is that sometimes females, when they lay their eggs, instead of making a traditional egg sac that looks like a little white ball, they'll just keep the eggs in a little cluster and carry them with their mouth parts, their chalicery. How I have seen some exceptions of this, some cellar spiders that do appear to have egg sacs in their web. However, a lot of times you're going to find them carrying those little egg clusters in their mouths. And this is an example of what that looks like. It's that cluster of eggs, not really surrounded by a bunch of silk like you would normally see. This is just the mother carrying around those eggs while they incubate. All right, so cellar spiders are really good predators, actually. And they are some of the world's best predators at hunting down other spiders, actually. Which maybe is something we don't think about too often that spiders are actually pest control for other spiders and is one of the reasons that I love spiders so much is that you really can't get too overpopulated with spiders because they'll, they'll start uh, wearing each other down in the spider on spider violence here. So uh, yeah, spiders are, these cellar spiders are specialists at taking down other spiders basically because of the way that they live, the way that they hunt in these webs. So I'm going to break down a cellar spider's abilities in two different ways in terms of their defense against predators and also their offensive capabilities against prey because i think that's going to be a really interesting way of looking at what makes these cellar spiders so cool and we're going to start off with their defense mechanisms which basically is web gyration so one thing that i meant to cover a little bit earlier on is that cellar spiders go by a lot of different names some of those names are daddy long legs for example da daddy long leg spiders i don't recommend using that one because it could be off often confused with other animals that in different parts of the world are also referred to as daddy long legs and we'll go over one of these animals a little later in this video so stay tuned for that but another one of their nicknames is the vibrating spiders or gyrating spiders and if you've never seen a cellar spider up close you might be confused as to why they're called vibrating spiders but i have a really cool video uh, that showcases exactly what this defense mechanism looks like Special thanks to the YouTube channel Nature Clearly for that footage in that video clip that I shared. It was a really good way to show how cellar spiders actually vibrate their webs. And they do so in order to look blurry, basically to either look like a bigger animal or that something uh, really fearsome is going on that you don't want to go anywhere near, or even that the animal isn't even there because that vibration is so fast that the spider just becomes a blur. You can't even see where the body is. And it doesn't, it certainly doesn't. 
uh, hurt that the spider is so skinny that it's a little hard to see in the first place, right? Anyway, that is their defense. But that's not the only thing that's really cool about cellar spiders. They also have offensive capabilities that make them really efficient predators, especially of other animals like spiders. And that basically boils down to their body shape, what shape their body is in, that uniqueness about them in comparison to other spiders. The same clues that we're using to try and determine whether the spider in front of you is a cellar spider or not, that plays a big role in how dominant it is in some of these spider versus spider matchups. And I can illustrate this actually using video game terminology. In video games, we have these things called hitboxes and hurtboxes in uh, combat-based video games, right? So basically, what a hitbox is, is represented by this red triangle here. When your character launches an attack, um, the, the system, the computer, has to read its hitbox basically to determine that anything in its range of that hitbox took damage from the attack that your character launched, right? So if you stay out of an opponent's hitbox when an attack is launched, you effectively dodged or evaded that attack. So in contrast to that, a hurtbox, which in this image is represented by this green rectangle, is basically where your character can be uh, hit in order for him or her to take damage. So, uh, if we think about trying to choose a character that is really powerful, that'll give us the best edge in a combat-oriented video game, we ideally want one with a very large hitbox, right? Because that means it'll be easier for us to land hits on our opponents. And we ideally want something with a very small hurtbox, because then it would be harder for opponents to land uh, damaging moves on us. Well, let's put that in the context of the cellar spiders real quick. So check out the body of the cellar spider when it's in the web. It's usually hanging upside down in a web just like this, not unlike the cobweb spiders. Let's think about this in terms of hitboxes and hurtboxes. Now those legs are really skinny, but they're really long, right? So this spider actually has a really long range. Where can it extend to when something gets caught in its web and it goes down and starts throw using those legs to throw silk at this thing to entangle it even more? Well, its hitbox is actually pretty far away because of how long those legs are. Now, what about its hurtbox? Where does this spider need to take a hit in order for it to deal critical damage? Sure, you could maybe try and clip one of its legs, but it has eight of those, right? Really, the size of the hurtbox is all the way over here, really far away from where its hitbox is, right? Theoretically speaking. So, this is basically the magic of the the body model of the cellar spiders, is even though they look so frail, they it's actually a pretty well calculated design uh, that these spiders employ to great effect. All right, now I wanna take the last part of this video to really talk about some animals that cellar spiders are very often confused with. And I wanna talk about an animal here called a harvestman that is an, another arachnid that is not a spider, but it is commonly called a daddy longleg, especially where I'm from. So if you guys remember, daddy longlegs was one of the uh, common names that sometimes is given to these cellar spiders. Now that's confusing because these two animals aren't very closely related. To the untrained eye, they might both look like spiders, but harvestmen are not spiders. They belong to a different order called opiliones within the same class of arachnida. However, harvestmen do not uh, are put, have two body segments and they cannot spin silk. So the body segments you see at the top left where the cellar spider is, it has the cephalothorax where its eyes are and where all of its legs are protruding from. And then behind that, the darker section is their abdomen. Just like all spiders, they're split into two main body parts. Now, harvestmen uh, technically also have two body parts, but they're fused to the point where you can almost in no species tell that there are actually a cephalothorax and an abdomen. It just looks like one little dot where all of the legs come from. So there is a, oh yeah, this shows the two body parts. I could have, I could have just moved on to the next slide. <laughs> there is a big myth out there. One of the biggest spider myths that spread around that the, the daddy long legs is actually the most venomous animal in the world. But uh, some people say that their fangs are so small that they can't pierce human skin. So uh, the question would follow then, 
if you're using the term daddy long legs, well, which are you referring to? Are you referring to cellar spiders or are you referring to harvest men? And the answer is, uh, it's not true of either. <laughs> this is unfortunately a myth. It makes for a really cool story. And that's why I think it so easily spread around that it just, I mean, think about something being the most dangerous animal on the planet, but it can't actually inflict any, uh, the bite that would inject venom. I mean, that's just a cool story. It, and I think that's part of the reason why it spread so quickly. One of the stories I heard is that there was once a scientist who tested injecting the saliva of harvest men into some mice and uh, the mice died almost instantly. And so he concluded from that, oh, this must be the most venomous animal in the world, which of course is a very poor study. Injecting uh, very random things into the body of some animal is very likely to result in the animal's death because the body just doesn't know how to handle that. Now, harvestmen, aside from not being able to spin silk, they don't have any venom. Cellar spiders, on the other hand, like almost all spiders, they do have venom. However, it is very, very weak. Uh, there are a few people out there who have been bitten by cellar spiders in uh, experiments, even to test out this w very myth, including members of the famous Mythbusters, and the, have reported the venom of the bites to be very mild in its effects. However, there is another animal that is commonly confused with cellar spiders and vice versa that actually could be quite dangerous, and this animal is the famous fiddleback spider, also called the brown recluse or violin spider, and this is one of the two medically significant spiders that are commonly found throughout the United States. So, I wanted to have a quick section about how to differentiate between a cellar spider and a fiddleback spider. Now, there are going to be some similarities, I'll grant you that. For example, they're both relatively skinny. They're both pretty dull colors, shades of brown. A lot of times, the cellar spider will have some marking on its cephalothorax, and that is, of course, what the fiddleback spider is known for. You can see the little fiddle or guitar shape on the cephalothorax, with the bass starting at the eyes and the little uh, neck of the instrument moving down to the abdomen. That's one of the ways that you can tell uh, a fiddleback spider apart from other spiders. But unfortunately, a lot of cellar spiders do have markings that sometimes resemble somewhat of a of a violin themselves on their cephalothorax. So if you don't want to get too close, that might not be a dead giveaway. So here are some things that you can use to sort of help you determine between the two. First of all, cellar spiders will have much longer, much skinnier legs. Um, the Loxoscales spiders, the fiddlebacks, they have shorter and stockier thicker legs, right? Uh, that's, of course, due to their lifestyle. Uh, hence, cellar spiders, they're usually found on webs. If you ever find a cellar spider that is not in a web, that cellar spider is not having a good time. It is trying to find a place where it can set up a web because that's where it's comfortable. Or you may have stumbled upon a male who is looking for a female. One of those things could be true. Loxoscales spiders, fiddlebacks, will almost never be on a web. They're not web builders. They're hunters on the ground. That's how they live their lives. So when you find a spider walking around, uh, probably not a cellar spider. Now, uh, lastly, cellar spiders, because they're not usually on the ground and prefer being on webs, they're kind of clumsy walkers. They kind of wobble around a lot. Whereas Loxoscale spiders, the fiddlebacks, they're actually decently quick because that's their specialty, right? Their specialty is running up walls and, and along the ground where they look for prey. So those are some of the things that you can help you determine between these two. Of course, uh, if you really aren't sure if you have a uh, potentially medically significant spider like a fiddleback spider in your house, I recommend trying to take a picture of it and perhaps posting it onto a site like the spider subreddit where people are usually really, really quick to respond and tell you what you have. Just make sure that you include your location and that you include um, uh, the clearest picture that you can take. Anyway, that's just about going to do it for this episode. I uh, hope you guys learned quite a bit about these cellar spiders. Just to recap, these cellar spiders are not harmful. There are many, many species of cellar spiders all over the world, and not a single one of them has been confirmed to have medically significant venom to us. They also like to stay out of the way. Just like cobweb spiders, they like to build their webs, usually to the best of their ability, away from human traffic. Uh, they have this goofy defense mechanism where they vibrate their webs when you get too close to them. And they also are kind of specialist at taking down other spiders because of their 
the body shape, basically. Anyway, thank you so much for coming to this episode of our Beginner's Guide to Spider Identification. This is going to just about wrap up the first section about spiders that are found in webs, and we're going to work on a couple of spiders that are commonly found on the ground or uh, walking or climbing in some of the next videos. So I hope you stay tuned for those, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.